Hello everyone, I'm Mitch Smith and uh, I'd like to welcome y'all to our YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to be discussing uh, some about Moses and how he came about and uh, what the good Lord placed on, on Moses to do and how Moses become a faithful servant for to the Lord and an obedient servant to him. And uh, we're going to be first starting out in the first chapter of Exodus. We're going to try to make it. I'm going to try to keep this short enough where, you know, uh, uh, where it don't really prolong out. But we'll probably try to cover chapters one and two. And then after that, then later on, uh, start up back out with chapter three. Uh, but if you haven't done so already, I want to thank you for again. Thank you for joining, you know, to our YouTube channel. If you haven't done so already, I ask you to please subscribe, share us around. Feel free to uh, follow up, follow and catch up with us on Facebook and Twitter. You can find us there on there too. If you need to ever get a hold of me, you can always get a hold of us through our uh, social media sites. And you can uh, send me an email at info.mitchsmithbiblestudies at gmail.com. But uh, we'll just get right on into it. We'll start off in Exodus chapter 1. If you got your Bible and you'd like to read with us. <clears throat> it says, Now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob. Reuben, um, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Jebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Nephtali, Gad, and Asher. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were seventy souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed sailing mighty and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falls out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did, and set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithom and Ramses. But the more they inflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and all matter of service in the field all their service wherein they made them service serve was with rigor with uh, the rigor that's something like putting the pressure on people you know making it hard for them and a lot of trouble uh, bringing hardship upon them and we as people should not do people to that um uh, to this day and uh the reason why the, the pharaoh the new one the new king it says the real pharaoh the reason why he was getting worried is because the children of israel israel's getting more abundantly and uh they's becoming more than they was of the egyptians and he was afraid of that for the fear, if uh, if an invading arm was to come, well, then were uh, 
the children of Israel or the Hebrews, since they was in bondage, the Pharaoh was afraid that they would join the enemy side and fight against them. So he placed upon them taskmasters, you know, people that's over them, and they brought hardships upon them. It's like keeping them under control, like what governments and stuff does to this day to other people to keep them under control because uh, they want that power. They want that power over the people. And that's what the Egyptians was doing to uh, the Israel, children of Israel. And they was forcing them to work hard labor, you know, with brick uh, to make these great cities for the Pharaoh and uh, structures and stuff. Stuff and the reason why they was getting so, and then later, uh, it goes on to later that Pharaoh, as we will read later on, well, then he goes into he has a little talk with the uh, midwives for the Hebrew women, and uh, he tells them for whenever the, the Hebrew women starts to bear a child become a child well then he, he tells them to uh, do away and basically drown and just do away with these if it was a male child but to save their life if it was a, a female again it goes back because he's afraid you know that they lose control over them and so forth but the midwives, they didn't listen to them. They went against the Pharaoh and went ahead and saved the male children, which again, we'll get a little bit later on into that. And uh, But God, he favored the midwives because they feared the Lord more than they did Pharaoh. So the Lord, he took care of the, the midwives and favored, and favored them. And, uh, but one of the reasons why the children of Israel was so abundantly, it falls all the way back to the time of Abraham whenever the Lord made a covenant with Abraham that he would be like the father of many nations, like, you know, his descendants own would be great. And they would inherit uh, Canaan and Israel and so forth as that. Which I can read a little bit to you if you're not too familiar with. <coughs> Says according to the Hebrew Bible, the covenant, the covenant of the pieces of the covenant between the parts uh, in Hebrew was a it was an event in which God revealed Himself to Abraham and made a covenant with him, in which God announced to Abraham that his descendants would eventually inherit the land of Israel. And another part of the covenant is known as the Promised Land. And can be found in Genesis 12, 1, where Abraham was called by God to leave Ur and go to a place known as Canaan. The land of Canaan then became known as Israel. Israel was named after Abraham's grandson and is often referred to as the promised land because God promised to give the land to the descendants of Abraham. Another part of it is... Uh, the covenant is known as the promise of the descendants and can be found in Genesis 12 2. This is where God promised Abraham that he would make a great nation out of him. I will increase your numbers very, very much and I will make you into nations. This is when God changed Abram's name to Abraham, meaning father of many nations. So this was done before they fell into the bondage of the Egyptians. I mean, this covenant was made with Abraham that his uh, the descendants of Abraham will become mighty. And that's the reason they was flourishing so abundantly and they was outnumbering the Egyptians. The Egyptians, the Pharaoh, the Egyptians was scared, you know, of this uh, because they had become more mightier you know, in abundance of people than the Egyptians was. And he was afraid that they would lose control over them and children of Israel, they would join forces with the enemies to fight against the Egyptians. But we'll read on 
But that's how, uh, but they was coming more abundantly. I mean, it was told beforehand, before they even become in bondage. Uh, that was one of the covenants that God made with Abraham. The father of many nations and, uh, many would be, uh, descendants after him. Uh, but we'll read on right here and it says, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all matter of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. Rigor being like hardship, bringing hardship upon them and uh, basically had them under control. Uh, they was uh, in control of the Israelites, and they's making them, you know, build these great structures, these great cities for Pharaoh, you know, with mortar, brick, and they is forcing them into hard labor. And the king of Egypt spake to Hebrew midwives, like I was saying, here's where it goes about the midwives, what I was explaining it before. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Sephra in the name of the other pure, and he said, when, when ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then shall save life. But the midwives feared God, and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men, children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto him, Why have ye done this thing and have saved the men, children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty and it came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses and Pharaoh charged all his people saying every son that is born ye shall cast into the river and every daughter ye shall save alive well this here is where Pharaoh or where the midwives did not obey Pharaoh and do away with the, the uh, male childs and save the, the female childs. Uh, they say they went ahead and went against Pharaoh and saved the male child because they feared God more than they did Pharaoh. So therefore God, he, he dealt with the midwives good. He treated them good. And, uh, but the Pharaoh, he, since the midwives wouldn't do what he requested, and I guess he wouldn't, he wouldn't do away with the midwives for disobeying because he knew the midwives had favor with God. And he probably knew if he did something to them, not only would he be in trouble with the Lord, but probably, most likely, with the, the, the Israel people, the children of Israel also. So here's what he does. He goes and has his people that, you know, every male child that uh, comes about, they are to take them and drown them since the midwives would do it. But it doesn't work out that w way too well here for therefore God has brings forth a male child by the name of Moses but where Moses' mother, she hid him for approximately about three months. And after she couldn't hide him no more, she did this in the fear of what Pharaoh had charged his people to do. Gave him orders to drown the male, male children. And she hid him approximately three months to uh, save his life. But when she couldn't keep him hiding no more, uh, it goes on to say how she... Uh, saved his life. And, it, and if you look, it would be hard for any mother to do that, especially what she did. But it was to be this way for I believe and to myself, the Lord came to her and told her how to, 
you know, gave her instructions how to do it, um, and save his life. But this very same male child becomes later Pharaoh's daughter, goes down to the river to wash and, you know, bathe, and she spies this basket that Moses' mother had put him in and put him down into the water, and he went into the glades of the river. And Pharaoh's daughter, when she went down the river, she seen the basket. Well, she sends one of her maidens out there to retrieve the basket. And she has compassion on it. And which we'll get on into that here in a minute of how it comes about. But little did anybody know that the male child that Pharaoh's daughter had got from his mother from out of the river is going to be a cross like deliverer, may not be the cross, but a type of a cross like a savior or a deliverer to help their own bring the children of Israel out from bondage. But we'll read on right here. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took a to wife, a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bull, bull rushes and dabbed it, daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept, and she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she called his name Moses, and she said, Because I drew him out of the water. Now, as I told you earlier, I told you how he came to Beth be in a river because Pharaoh was going to have, have charged his people to take all the male, male, the Hebrew males that was born and to do away with them, you know, uh, drown them or take their lives. But the, the female, the Hebrew female children, he, they was to live alive. Well, Moses' mother feared this, so she hid him three months, and, not, and she where she couldn't hide him no more. I believe in my heart, the Lord came unto her and told her what to do, because this would be hard for any mother to do. I mean, put your your child in a basket and send it down the river. But I guess, you know, she was in a desperate situation at that time because she knew if he, she had been caught with him he would have been destroyed but God fixed it God can fix anything and I've said many times with man it is impossible but with God all things is possible there is nothing that God cannot do and I believe in my heart he came into her and and told her you know what to do that's how he come to stay alive And whenever she placed 
to me in the basket. I believe she was told how to make that basket and, you know, basically keep the water up. She said the dog that was slime and pitch, you know, like basically waterproof proof it, just about the same way as God gave Noah instructions on building the ark. He did the same thing, put pitch on it with, uh, he put pitch on it. And you got to look at him about the ark, Noah's ark. If you get to look and read why he said, chose gopher wood, when you get to looking in gopher wood, because when it starts getting wet, it swells. Therefore, it makes it tighter. And, uh, but <clears throat> as she put the, the child into the basket, well, Pharaoh's daughter, she comes down to the bay to wash and to clean. And they, they see the basket. She sends one of her maidens over to get it. Well, when she gets it, she opens up and says, the Bible says, well, she uh, has a passion on it. Well, Moses' sister was a watching to see what was going to become of it. Well, she goes over to Pharaoh's daughter. <clears throat> so, well, would you like me to get one of the Hebrew women to uh, nurse it for you? Be kind of difficult for Pharaoh's daughter to uh, take a, a Hebrew child maybe into, you know, the Pharaoh's uh, kingdom. But I've always wondered about that. I mean, you know, somehow they all, they all had to know. Uh, but again, God fixed it. But she told, she went and got Moses' mother, the, the mother, the original mother of the child. Well, Pharaoh's daughter <clears throat> told her to go ahead and nurse it. And she would pay Moses, you know, that wages. And then after a while, when he starts getting a little older. She returns it back to Pharaoh's daughter, where Moses becomes Pharaoh's daughter's son. But then here we start getting into a place where, after he's grown, if you notice, he's a Hebrew, but yet he's raised a little while with the Hebrew, then again, a little while with. The Egyptians. So he knows both cultures. He knows both the Hebrews and the uh, Egyptians, the way I take it. So he knows both. And the Egyptians, they become aware of Moses. They get, you know, familiar with him. and But he basically knows both. So that kind of helps him out too. Because later on, it says he comes out and catches, you know, some of his brethren being beaten. But we're fixing to read into that. And it starts off with verse 11, chapter 2. And it says, And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian smiting in Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way. In that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strolled together, and he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me, and as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Now, again, Moses' mother raised him for a while. So he is familiar with the Hebrew. And later, Pharaoh's uh, daughter acquired him back. So he is raised, you know, both, both the Hebrews and the Egyptians. So he was kind of familiar with both cultures. And uh, there was a day, you know, when he was growing up, basically grown a little while, uh, he went out and seen this Egyptian taskmaster beating one of the he Hebrews. As you got to remember, these Hebrews, they had taskmasters, you know, like, bosses like uh supervisors or whatever and uh 
they was in charge of keeping on the working. And they would cause pain and uh, discomfort, you know, measures if they thought that they wasn't doing very well at the working, you know. But Moses, he goes out there and he sees where this one was taskmaster, Egyptian taskmaster, was beating one of his brethren, one of the Hebrews. Well, therefore, I, I'd say he felt compassion for him. Because you got to know Moses, he's a little bit different. Because it says, you know, back in Exodus, that she, his mother seemed that he was a goodly child. So something was miraculous about him. And uh, so, therefore, Moses, he, he, he looked to see if nobody wouldn't watch it. He didn't think anybody saw, but he went ahead and slew, he slew and uh, killed this Egyptian. I always got to remember that. He slew and killed this Egyptian. But yet, later on, God still yet has a purpose for Moses. So I'll tell you people out here in this life that think that you've done so much wrong that you can't be forgiven for, just take it before the Lord and ask him to forgive you. If he can forgive Moses for the things he did, he can forgive you. If he can forgive me for the things that I've done, he can forgive you. Just kneel down and ask for forgiveness and accept them into your heart. But after Moses slew, slew the Egyptian, then the next day he goes out there and he's aware that there's a couple of others that seen him do it. <clears throat> so he knew that if they knew, the word was going to start getting out and getting too far. And sure enough, it did cause. And Moses, he flees because he said, sure, you know, uh, this is to be known. This was known. <clears throat> so, before it got too far old, <clears throat> Moses fled. He left. But sure enough, as Moses feared, it did, it did get back to Pharaoh, and he seeked to try to kill Moses. But Moses, he during left, and went to the land of Midian, where he runs in to Raul's, or later Jethro's daughters. He had seven daughters. And he met them at the well. And when they went to gather the water, the water Jethro's fox, well, then these other herders came in and was trying to push them away. They wanted their fox in there first, but Moses, he steps in and pushes them away because prior or Jethro's daughters were there first. And then he helps Jethro's daughters. But we'll, I'll read on the end of that right here. And it came... And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out to his brother and looked on their burdens and he spied an Egyptian, smiling in Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strolled together and he said to him that did the wrong, wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses, but Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Media, and he sat down by well. Now the priest of Midian had seven dollars and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to Raul, their father, he said, How is it that ye are come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds, and also drew water enough for us, and watered the flock. And I know it says an Egyptian, for I'd say he probably had Egyptian raiment on. So they took him for an Egyptian, which, in other words, but he's really a Hebrew. And it said, 
And they said, An Egyptian, deliver us out of the hand of the shepherds. And also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. And he said to his daughters, And where is he? Why is it that ye have left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. So he sent his daughters back, you know, where he had helped his daughters. I take it that Jethro, he wanted to give thanks and show favor and give thanks to the Lord for this man helping his daughters out. And he also wanted to show Moses his appreciation. Also, you know, give him thanks for helping him. But Moses, you know, later, Jethro gives uh, Moses one of his daughters. And she buries him a son named Gershom. Uh, because that was like a strange, stranger in a strange land. And, uh, but... It goes on, on down here to say, And Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses, Zipporah, his daughter. And she bare him a son, and he called his name Gershom. For he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died. And the children of Israel sighed, side by reason of the bondage and they cried and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage and God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham with Isaac and with Jacob and God looked upon the children of Israel and God had respect unto them now as Moses went to the land of Midian Again, he came upon Jethro's daughters. His daughters was watering their father's flock. Other herders came in, pushed Jethro's daughters aside in their flock so they could get to the water first. But Moses stood up and he came in and helped Jethro's daughters for they were there first. And uh, so he helped them. He helped them water them flocks and gave them water and Jethro's wondering how they got back so soon and they I guess with the uh, I said earth the raiment that Moses probably had on and the way he looked they took him as an Egyptian and but in reality he was a Hebrew uh, but he sends his daughters and they, he, he asked his daughters well, where is this man he sends his daughters back to bring Moses back you know to show him faith Give thanks to the good Lord for the help and uh, uh, give Moses thanks for helping out of his daughters and family and to help water his flocks. And in return, he gave Moses the side to dwell there and found himself content there. And he and Jethro ended up giving his daughter Zephyrah unto Moses, which Zephyrah ends up bearing a son for Moses and they named Moses' son Gershom. And then it goes on to where the Pharaoh had died, but a narrow one is coming into his spot. But in while that Pharaoh died, it says that God started hearing the groans and the moans and cries from Egypt. And he remembered the covenant that he made with Abraham. So therefore, here in chapter 3, which we will get in next time, not at this time, but next time, where he starts calling upon Moses to go forth to bring his children up, but he has to get Moses to believe in him. He has to get Moses prepared and change Moses' heart, which again, we'll get into that. I will not get too much in it and give it away. But that's it that I have for you today. And I want to say uh, thank you all for visiting and watching our YouTube channel. And uh, if you haven't done so, please subscribe to it, share us around, as I'll be uploading more Bible teachings and messages to it, and also visions and dreams. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, you can get a hold of me through our social media sites, or you can email me at info.mitchsmithbiblestudies at gmail.com. And I want to say God bless to y'all and y'all's families. And I love y'all from the bottom of my heart.